They're still pumping out the same line, that if you vote for reform, you will get Labour. But the inflection point means that actually, if you vote Conservative in the red wall, you will almost certainly get Labour. A Conservative vote in the red wall is now a wasted vote. We are the challengers to Labour. We are now the real opposition. The last time we had a little press conference in London, it was on Monday. And I said to you, something is happening out there. There is a momentum behind what Reform UK are doing. And of course, there's always a lag time between understanding what's happening on the ground and seeing it playing out in the polls. I also told you that some of the polling industry were acting entirely dishonestly. And I'm pleased to say, as a result of my letter to the chair of the British Polling Council, they have been told now they really ought to be prompting for reform. So they're all playing catch up. I also said three or four weeks ago that I thought reform would get more votes in this general election than the Conservative Party, and I absolutely believe that now to be the case. So yes, it was a delight last night to see that the inflection point has arrived. The momentum that Richard and I are seeing on the streets and on the doors is now filtering through and we are one point ahead of the Conservatives. But just bear this in mind. We are well ahead of the Conservatives in the North East, in the North West, in Yorkshire and the Humber, in the East Midlands, in the West Midlands and in parts of Eastern Region. And in what we all call the red wall seats, we are significantly ahead of the Conservatives. And so I think Penny Morden was a little bit shocked last night on the ITV debate. I don't think she had a very good evening, really, all round, uh, because they're still pumping out the same line, that if you vote for reform, you will get Labour. But the inflection point means that actually, if you vote Conservative, in the red wall, you will almost certainly get Labour. A Conservative vote in the red wall is now a wasted vote. We are the challengers to Labour. We are now the real opposition. And this needs to be reflected. As I said, it's beginning to be reflected by the polling industry, but it needs to be reflected by the broadcasters as well. Because Ofcom, on the guidance they've given to broadcasters, say that really the most important of all the factors is the performance in the last two general elections. We haven't stood in the last two general elections. It's as if everything about our politics is designed to stop new boys and girls coming in and to keep everything the same. At the moment, broadcasters are giving uh, our party 8% of their coverage, which clearly is nowhere near in line with where we actually are. But there's something else I want to ask for today. Uh, the BBC will be having a leaders' debate, a four-way leaders' debate, with the leader of the Liberal Democrats, the Conservatives, Labour and the SNP. And that takes place next week. And I think we can demand of right now that the BBC put us into that debate. I would also very much like to do a debate head-to-head -head with Keir Starmer. And the reason is very simple. We think that this should be the immigration election because whether we're talking about rents, whether we're talking about housing availability, whether we're talking about access to GP services, whether we're talking about pressure on infrastructure, there is no aspect of our national life that is not touched by the massive population crisis this country now faces directly as a result of immigration policies that were started by Labour but accelerated by this Conservative government. And I thought it was very interesting to see the Labour manifesto where Keir Starmer lays out his six priorities for the country. And not one of those six was mass migration into Britain. So we're very much of the view that nothing will change under Labour. Who knows? It may even get a little bit worse. I would love, as I'm now the leader of the opposition, I would now love. <laughs> Well, I thought that was fairly obvious to everybody. <laughs> I would love to do a head-to-head -head with Keir Starmer to ask him, why? Why, if you're going out looking for the working people of Britain to vote for you, have you not put this in your top six 
priorities. What is for certain, people are beginning to realise this, is the election is over. Labour have won. It's merely a debate about the size of their majority, but perhaps more importantly, who is going to be the opposition voice to Labour in the House of Commons and in the country? Well, you may say to me, perhaps it'll be Sir Ed Davey when he's not falling off logs or on kiddie slides or whatever he may be doing. But Ed Davey can't provide real opposition to a Labour government, a Labour government about which we know in terms of policy really precious little because Ed Davey agrees with the Labour Party on most substantive issues. And it isn't going to be Rishi Sunak leading the opposition. I mean, he'll probably be in California anyway. And the Conservatives will choose someone and they probably won't last very long. And they can't provide opposition because they are hopelessly split down the middle on policy. In fact, they've spent more of the last four years fighting each other than they have fighting for the interests of the country. And I'm putting it to you that I believe I can be that voice of opposition. I'm pretty clear and consistent in what I stand, in what I stand up for. I'm not afraid of a fight. I don't bow to Twitter pressure or the mob on the streets. I've taken on the European Union. I've taken on the big banks. And I'm pretty certain I can take on a Labour government headed by Keir Starmer that will have almost no honeymoon period whatsoever, will inherit some very, very deep problems, and I don't think has the radical solutions to sort the country out. So my message to the country is thank you, but come on, join the revolt. What have you got to lose? You've been so let down, frankly betrayed, by the Conservatives after their 2019 win that it really is time for something new. We're excited about this. We've got up nine pips in the polls over the course of the last 10 days. I don't know where this ends, but I do feel momentum, optimism is out there with us. Thank you very much indeed.